get started with our November 23rd meeting. First, folks, if you could put your name uh, in the attendees section, I'll put a link uh, in the chat if you don't have uh, the document handy. There you go. And uh, also, if you could take a quick look at the agenda and see if there's anything that I've missed, uh, any sections there. Uh, and uh, we'll wait uh, for about a minute or so for folks to get that uh, squared away, and then we'll jump into our, our items. And while you're doing that, this is just a reminder for you and for anyone that might be watching this that we won't have uh, meetings um, uh, let's see, we have one more meeting after this, and then we're breaking uh, for the holiday season. So we'll have uh, our next meeting on the 7th, and then we'll be done uh, until the new year, and starting back up on the 4th, I believe. All right. Yeah. And if we're good with the agenda, let's go ahead and get rolling on this. Um, uh, release updates, Vadim is not here, but I can share with you what he shared with us. Uh, although, Christian, you're on the call. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, you read the same thing that I did, so. Oh, have I? I I'm not sure I have. Um, oh, okay. So. Well, I, I was thinking of the, he chatted some stuff, but. Uh, about so the updates? Yeah. So in short, uh, there's an issue with going from uh, 4.8 to 4.9. Uh, the upgrade tests are failing, and uh, there's a uh, pull request here. I can link to it uh, that uh, uh, is uh, an attempt to work through these issues. And uh, it's basically causing a reboot um, of an odd thing. Um, but uh, he is working at that, and so his efforts are very much uh, appreciated. Christian, do you have anything yeah. that you want to add to that? Yeah. Yeah, we're essentially only missing the conformance mark here with those uh, two reboots that are currently incurred. We haven't quite figured out why that is. Um, we do have a hunch, though, and Vadim's following um, through with that. So hopefully that's going to be fixed. If it's not, if it can't be fixed, we will just um, not conform uh, here to the uh, Kubernetes conformance test and just make it reboot twice. It's not like anything else would be broken. It's just we obviously lose um, uh, the availability twice and it should per the conformance test only happen once. But uh, after those two reboots, everything still uh, works, so it's not like there's any serious issues. It's just we we don't want the second reboot, obviously. So if there's no solution to it, we will still go ahead and release uh, 4.9 uh, as is. Although obviously we. Does anyone have any comments or questions uh, about that or anything else uh, in terms of the? 4.8 to 4.9 transition. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on now to uh, FCOS updates with Timothy. Go ahead. Hey. So the major point for Federal Forest uh, is that we shipped today the Rebase to Fedora 35 in stable. So, um, Fedora Chorus is now fully on Fedora 35 right now. I don't know the exact status in OKD, but hopefully that should come soon. We, there, there is a PR open for that as well. Um, and yeah, that's awesome. So, we'll, we'll uh, definitely switch over to Fedora uh, 35 soon. Currently, we're still obviously rebuilding OKD uh, or the Fedora Core OS. Um, into the OKD base OS. Uh, eventually, and I've been kind of talking with Jonathan Livon from uh, the core team, um, eventually we, we don't want to do the rebuild anymore and just uh, kind of layer on top of uh, Fedora core OS. We'll need some additional tooling um, for this. That is, however, on its way. Uh, there's some interesting uh, enhancements um, going on on the core OS side that I've just been uh, following from afar. 
Uh, but yeah, that's awesome, uh, awesome work on the uh, CoreOS side. So thank you very much, um, Timothy. And yeah, looking forward to, to all those changes that are coming soon. Yep. Hopefully that should, at least the Fedora certifier rebates should help with network manager and everything. Um, so yeah, and apart from that, we've got, um, we've got something that was merged in the MCO, but related to all the interaction with SSH key long-standing issues, which is now, we should not be fixed and hopefully will be fixed. Or uh, OKD, if I find the PR again. Right, yeah, um, that PR merged yesterday and we, we do have uh, some similar functionality in our uh, machine config operator fork that we're still carrying right now for OKD. Um, but yeah, eventually that, that is one of the last few remaining comments that had to go in. And I think there's only uh, really two minor things um, that still have to be fixed in, in the mainline code uh, until we can move back uh, to using that mainline and not requiring the fork. So yeah, I, I do hope we will, uh, and, and, and that's kind of um, the agreement with the uh, machine config operator team that we uh, get all that in into mainline in the 4.10 uh, release cycle, which is uh, the current cycle we're working uh, in. So yeah, hopefully with 4.10, we, we won't be needing that fork anymore. And that's on its way. I think uh, there's only a few minor issues now remaining. So I think we're, we're pretty good there. And I think that's about it. I don't remember if anything big uh, impacting Fedora CoreOS right now, so we hit for me. Excellent. Okay. And um, now we're going to move on to the docs update with Brian and he's on the call or uh, no. Nope. So Brian, go ahead and take it away from uh, update from the docs meeting. Okay, so um, the docs is sort of live into normal running now from um, the MK docs update. Um, so everything's done. We've got a code of conduct coming. Um, Michael is sort of wordsmithing that at the moment. Um, one area of discussion that came up in the docs work group that we sort of deferred to this group is what is the use of the OKD repo going to be moving forward? Because at the minute we've got documentation split between the repo and the OKD community documentation as well as the product documentation. So it's just thought it's it's probably worth having a conversation as to should we move the documentation out of the OKD repo and use that for as an issue tracking mechanism and have the, docu the community documentation in a single place? Or do we think there is a use for documentation within that Git repo? Um, so that's a conversation really for this group to make it make a decision on and get people's views. Um, so what do people think? Where do the, um, and sorry that I don't know this off the top of my head, where do the OpenShift um, docs reside? Are they in the OpenShift repo? on GitHub, Christian, are they in a separate repo? What's the structure there? There's a separate repo just for the docs, if I remember correctly. Okay, but are they underneath the, the main OpenShift ones? Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we could ask, if if people think so, I could ask, or we could ask the, the docs team if it would be okay to put OKD-docs there as well, if that's what people are thinking would be more appropriate. Is that the gist of what you're asking, Brian? Well, it, it was really that if you look at the OKD main repo, the OpenShift slash OKD repo, we've mm -hmm. got some documentation in there. There's some old guides in there. Um, there's some how-to information in there. And it's really, should we move that out of the repo and focus it on the um, the OKD.io 
website and make that the single place for community documentation? Or is there a use for documentation in the OKD repo? Um, yeah, and this so actually, that, was, that was really the issue. Yeah, and one of the things that, that this uh, points to is that, again, I saw updates actually to the guides, the old guides in the OKD repo a couple of days ago. Um, I need to mention something to Vadim because I think Vadim approved it. We don't want any changes to those anymore. We need to actually delete those because those all got moved. I, Mike, I think, has all of those now uh, when he moved those over to the OKD.io um, site. So uh, I think what we need to do is decide, like, just to make sure we have everything updated. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, like, because people added updates to those recently. Uh, make sure that everything is updated on the website and then delete all of that stuff. And then ask Vadim if he's comfortable with that OKD repo just being for issues uh, on the software and discussion on the software and everything else be in the OKD that IO repo, which I think we agreed is going to move eventually to GitLab if we can get everything working correctly, right? And take it out completely from OpenShift. Because the problem is, is then we have no, we have a little bit of control, but not a lot, right? Um, and if we move it, then we can exercise more control and be a little more creative with how we do access. Um, that was my thought. So. I think putting it under the open shift would actually take us in the other direction, right, from where we are. Yeah, going. that's what I was trying to tease out here. It wasn't quite clear in the, the chat well, where where we wanted to land, and someone's put in GitHub slash OpenShift dash CS slash OKD and move all the docs over there is what I think we're suggesting here. Yeah, I think, I think, I think Timothy put it in a nutshell, move out of the OpenShift org, basically. Yeah. We want to move everything out of it. Um, I, have a, I have a question here. Um, yeah. So, like, we, you know, we have, like, docs.okd.io, which is, like, generated from the actual OCP, like, fork of the product docs or whatever. And then we're talking about the OpenShift kind of more community-oriented docs here. And my question is, like, if we intend that community-oriented, you know, repo to be a place where the community can actually come and contribute guides and stuff like that, then, you know, if that's kind of the ultimate intention, then we definitely need to have that in a place where everybody, you know, the governance can be more community oriented and everyone can feel comfortable kind of coming and contributing stuff there. So, like, I think it's awesome to see the guides and all that other stuff move somewhere closer to the community as opposed to being under the official OpenShift umbrella or whatever. Yeah, and Diane, actually, I did open a... Uh an issue and assigned you to it to investigate the legal ramifications of that. So, All right. um, basically we want to know is, is this, is this going to cause any problems with Red Hat or are they okay if we move the, the document? Now, the one thing we have to ask though is moving this out, it is, it will mean going even further or an even greater separation between the generated OKD docs that Michael is in charge of and the repo yeah. that we'll have in, in presumably GitLab. Bruce was doing some testing to see if we can get the MK docs and whatnot working in GitLab. Uh, then we, we will be going like even across reposit, repos, across repository servers as the case. So just something to keep in mind. We, we already are. We already are because don't forget OKD.io, the website is served now from GitHub. Whereas the docs.okd.io is served from Red Hat infrastructure because that is the doc server. So we already serve those two from two different servers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah docs are pretty separate from the code base. So I just, I, and the I, there's a little chat going on here too that the, the GitHub slash OKD repo has been taken by somebody who's, you know, sitting on the real estate. But, um, I think it, it looks like some, I could reach out and ask, and sometimes legal can reach out and ask and and um, get that back for us. It's ancient too. It's been around since like mid 
two thousands. Yeah. Two thousand nine. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, so there was a date's okay, D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll see what I can do um, about that, but um, we'll add that in. Yeah. Res reserve Timothy, if you could, um, the OKD dash project at just in case in GitHub, and um, and I'll see. I'll I'll work on that um, because it's nice and quiet this week while everyone in the states eats turkey. And see if I'm I can't just get it. <laughs> Just picking up from Mike's post in the chat, um, are we going GitHub or GitLab? Hub I think we're trying to have a presence on both, and then we'll figure out where we're going to go in the end later. Okay. What why, What is the what is the reason for having a presence on both? Or is Mostly, it just... so you don't get like name hijacking. Ah, okay. I, and I just remember that GitLab had come up in discussion the last time we talked about this as like another another community oriented location for us. Yeah. Was it GitLab or GitHub that changed their policy on project names that conflicted with other people's projects? One of them recently changed their policy, uh, like the, in the past year about that. I don't remember which one, but something to consider. But if you reach out to the individual, it doesn't look like they're doing any commits on the GitLab. Yeah. Uh, one so they I might trade them some swag for for their github repo or something there you go and christian yeah. says plus one to mirroring gitlab but linking back to github yeah definitely yeah i i would prefer if we could keep um all of the collaboration mostly on github just because uh, all of the code is there right and well, that, it'll, it'll uh, do us no good to have the collab it, it, once we're in a separate organization, most of the benefits of being on GitHub versus GitLab fall away because you can't do things like migrate issues across orgs. You can't you can't actually make port, pull requests, stuff like that. The only main value of doing it on GitHub versus GitLab is if you wanted to have like a code fork in OKD's project versus on the OpenShift org. I'm not sure that's something we actually want to do, but if that is an option that people are actually comfortable with us ever actually exploring, then sure. Otherwise, eh. Well, so Christian, why don't you explain your thoughts behind this? Because I, I guess I would see it as GitLab would, should be the single source of truth because of the functionality, but you, you're saying close to the code. What are the benefits of being close to the code for? I think that's just community? personal. Yeah, for me, that's just personal preference because I, I spent most of my time on GitHub. Uh, if I, I don't want to block uh, any decision words. Uh, yeah, yeah me, I, I'd be the same way. And, and it's probably just a little curmudgeoning. I'm just like, well, <laughs> GitHub's been good enough for the last 20 years. What's wrong with it now? I like yeah. VI. Damn you and your Emacs. Yeah. Because so GitLab, <laughs> GitLab aligns better with our open source ideologies. That's why. More. Yeah. True. Yeah, more so. <laughs> Open it car. aligns more, not com not not completely. It just aligns yeah, more. Yeah. 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 Get uh, I, let, give me until the December seventh meeting to do a little research and background on that that topic and grabbing back the OKD one, and I'll see if I can um, if there's anything the OSPO team or governance team has to say about that. Either I I don't know. I I don't have an opinion. Um, I just have a GitHub account, not a GitLab account. So to, to answer Mike's question, he said, does GitLab have a have or plan to have a discussions alternative? And does that matter here? So one of the things that we can do is issues. So their thing of discussions, I think, is pretty much similar. But the other thing that we talked about before was tags for issues being for website or code or whatever and breaking things down by the tags for issues or whatever. So that would cover things that are like issues on the site uh, and whatnot. And then in terms of general discussion, I, I don't know how we would do that. Yeah, because we just moved the support to discussions and, and getting everyone used to right. using the discussion feature. <laughs> So if we're going to GitLab and they don't have that feature, um, yeah. we need to make sure that we... Discussions are a GitHub only feature. Yeah, yeah. But, but I thought we were I mean, using I... uh, 
the GitHub account for uh, you know bug reports and discussions and you know like basically all the stuff that is currently on uh, the GitHub account um, we we're still going to keep there that we were just moving all of the docs over but uh, well I mean that was I thought that was a good discussion yeah did yeah, yeah. so I, I obviously I missed something while I was away in, in the GitLab um, conversation so I'm going to go back and watch the recordings um, mm -hmm. and so I, I I don't have a, a preference either way I just think there might be a cultural thing out in um, the Kubernetes world where people are using um, GitHub more frequently and that I'm concerned a little bit about what the other 300 or so people who never come to this meeting might think um, that are on the mailing list and the people who are using OKD in production um, about switching so uh, but I think as long as we're mirroring it doesn't matter um, so I'll just say that out loud on the recording and then do some research <laughs> All right. Well, okay, something we can flesh I, out. The, yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say, so it, it sounds like for, for sort of phase one or step one, we can look at shutting down the documentation content on OpenShift slash OKD, GitHub repo. And then a stage two is where it's all going to live eventually. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. take a task on trying to get rid of the guides and that put a pull request in to delete all that sort of stuff. We probably need um, Vadim to look at some of his contribution because he's got things like some stiff partial instructions like to build a, a release within the repo. So we need to work out where that should go and if that is actually worth porting, needs updating, valid or so I'll I'll reach out to Vadim on that. Um, just to finish off the docs, um, Dridi has created a, a draft survey. I don't have a link to it, and I've just been, we didn't put one in the, in the agenda, in the, the meeting notes from the last docs meeting. Um, so I, I think we're getting ready to release that. It's sort of getting finalized. Um, if we can get a link put into the minutes of this meeting, people can go and have a look. Um, Here, I'll what bring did, it up. What right did you use now. for? Yeah. What did you use for the survey well, so tool? Survey monkey. She or... hasn't done the survey. She hasn't done it. Uh, she was doing uh, Google Forms, but she hasn't completed all of the things that we talked about at the last meeting. So, okay. Um, here, I'll put it in the meeting uh, notes as well. Here. Okay. So um, she also, um, I, I'm sure you guys talked about this while I was away too. She also um, created the um, OKD Twitter handle, um, mm -hmm. and so what I'm hoping to do with that is push out this um, survey as well as each time we put a new release out put a notice in that OKD one um, that that's going on and then whenever we do a talk or um, maybe even the meeting reminder um, to add that in so um, it just starts getting some a little bit of content going there that's very specific to these meetings and talks and events not sort of fluff unless someone writes a wonderful OKD swimming upstream blog post um, those kinds of things and retweet them there so yeah so that that's where I would push out that as well as um, the, the mailing list for the survey and maybe even um, LinkedIn um, posts there so we can do some socializing and get some real feedback there I'm just finishing up adding uh the task, Brian's task. Uh, all right. And yeah, uh, Jamie, could I just throw in one more yeah. thing on the on the docs thing? Uh, like, if you look at uh, the way most uh, Git repositories are organized, um, the the documentation for that specific code that's in the repository is documented in that repository, right? You know, so like there'll be a README and maybe an install and all of that stuff. Um, in our case, it's a bit different because we're we're basically a delta to the official site, and that that makes it hard to find. You know, if you if you were going to try and build uh, the code, it's hard to find everything, uh, as we've talked about many times. Uh, so what I'm wondering is if rather than pulling all of the documentation to a separate site, if we distinguish which documentation is relevant 
to the actual code and pull requests and things like that and leave that on its local Git repository, wherever that is, GitHub presumably. And the overarching documentation on building OKD that sort of spans all of the sites is the stuff that we pull over. So I think that, we'd have that would be criteria on that, like sort of. Because some yeah, of the I mean, documents that's, that's sort of in a, in a way that's boundaries. that's a Vadim question, right. uh, or, or maybe a Christian question. Um, what makes like we've sort of talked to them off and on about pulling stuff over. Uh, I don't know that we've ever asked them what makes sense to stay there in terms of the README, you know, document and so on. Well, we have Christian here. Christian, what do you what do you think? Well, yeah, I, I think uh, since we're since the the main docs uh, is generated from essentially a shared documentation that is also used by OCP, uh, I don't I think we don't want to lose that because otherwise we'd have to replicate uh, everything uh, somewhere else. And I think it might be easier to kind of add the, or what I would prefer is still to have a single source of truth here. And maybe we can convince the, the Red Hat Docs team to allow for those uh, guides that we have, these community guides. We also pulled into the um, main, um, main repository, but then only be uh, generated uh, for the OKD docs. I think you can just exclude stuff there um, for the OCP product line and have have essentially files that will only be included in the in the OKD docs. Maybe we could add those community guides to the main documentation as something that then only shows up in the OKD docs. That would be my pre preferred way of doing things, just to have all of those things centralized somewhere. Um, I think the, the Fewer repositories, uh, the better. I think the, the but, issue with that, though, is it then can't be community contributed. I think the whole idea of what we're trying to do is facilitate the community being able to contribute. Um, if we're moving everything back into the official Red Hat repos, we're then limiting it to Red Hat only contribution, or Red Hat is having to do the transformation and the work. And um, so what, what would, I think what we're trying to do is go exactly the opposite direction. Keep the official stuff that's built as it is now on docs.okd.io, but have a community site where eventually we don't have the red hat barrier to contribution because it's within that organization. So um, I think that's the whole idea between okd.io is, is having that community capability. Um, and in terms of adding technical documentation, that's what we're really missing from the project. It's the low level stuff and um, the stuff that's in Vadim's installer repo. I think that is the primary source for creating a build image, but then that does then link into the upstream OCP repos and pull a lot of stuff in. It's the magic that goes on there as we get into, I mean, I'd like to pick up the whole thing about the missing um, operators, things like pipelines, GitOps. Um, so again, how do we build those from a community point of view? I think all that documentation should be okd.io. Um, one of the challenges I think that I certainly have when, when going across these projects is just where do I go look? I mean, I, I've tried to look at building the pipelines and I think I'm onto about six repos of stuff and having it all in the central place, describing the relationships, I think is going to be a lot easier than trying to pick out the, the repo specific, specific documentation and then me having to try and link them all together. So th th that'd be my point of view of having a central place rather than distributing it within the individual repos. Yeah, that's essentially the, the same reasoning um, as I had in, in for moving stuff into the main uh, OpenShift docs. But I, I do see the point. I mean, everybody can create a pull request and uh, uh, even for those OpenShift docs, the official ones. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It still needs a, a peer review by, by some Red Hat employee uh, for that to be able to merge in there. So yeah, it, it might be better to uh, then split that out indeed. Um, we, we don't want to lose the main um, 
OpenShift uh, generated docs, though, because that is still uh, very much bespoke, and and uh, you know our technical writers do do that, and we can't get that for free uh, with OKD. And uh, for me, it, it's just a little bit difficult. I, I mean, if we can find a way to kind of get both into onto one website, that would be ideal. So you, as a user, um, you'd have you just have one a site to to see to find the guides, the community docs, and the the official uh, generated docs, uh, and then that would be generated from two separate repositories. Um, one that the community owns with all the guides and the all all that stuff that is currently in the OKD repository, and also the official uh, repository. Um, but as as a user, I wouldn't uh, want to want to have to deal with those differences. Where where does the stuff come from? Um, so yeah, if, if if we could just have one second repository for all those guides and kind of plug that into the into the docs website, um, make it show up on the docs website as well, in addition to the generated um, stuff from the OpenShift docs, um, that would be ideal. But yeah, I have I uh, don't have I'm not very familiar with with how that is actually generated. Yeah. Well, you know what we need is an OKD cluster that we can run. A uh, task, a, a pipeline on that pulls down from one repo and then commits to the other uh, on a regular basis, and then you'd be able to incorporate the docs into, um, you know, the the external repo, you know, just by cloning it down and then putting it into into the docs repository, the into the community docs repository. Um, so are we good on this? I feel like we still need to talk to Vadim because uh, he doesn't really know. He's incidentally, he sort of missed every meeting where we've had detailed discussions about this just through chance. And so I feel like we should well, definitely include him in this. Well, it's maybe what, what I can do is in the interim between, because we're only going to have one more meeting between now and December 7th, is um, uh, if I can get uh, Char, not Charo, um, Jamie, myself, Vadim, and Christian on a quick call in between, um, and we can maybe suss out what the implications are, and, and pull in Michael Burke as well. I think we have we have one um, docs meeting there too between now and uh, the seventh. So um, let's see if we can do a little quick sprint and figure out what the logistics are. I just don't want to lose the docs teams as resources for generating. The OKD.io stuff uh, do something that would um, would 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 lose lose those um, resources. They are very key for us, and I think my gut says that there is a way when they generate those docs OKD.docs.io or docs.okd.io, they can add a sub group of links out in the menu on the side to the guides um, in some way, and so that would pull from the stuff that Brian Innes is, has been working on with the make docs and make links there in one canonical docs.okd.io and the community could still be working on the the guides and all of that and then put pull requests in on docs.io. That's after listening to everything today, that's kind of where I think we're gonna head, but um, I'd like to talk to Vadim as well to make sure it doesn't screw up anything he's thinking about. Um, so. All right. Anything else on docs before we move on? All right. Let's now move on to yeah, virtualization. Sandro, take it away. Hi, everyone. And just a quick update on the virtualization side. We are now implementing uh, automated tests for running uh, uh, OKD virtualization with uh, Rook IO. Uh, so it's currently uh, still under development, but we already reproduced it manually and it seems to work fine. So that's a good news for us. And uh, on the communication side, we are redirecting the existing uh, website for OKD virtualization to the subgroup within the OKD IO. So once it's ready, uh, we will have everything uh, from OKD virtualization, including OKD IO website. 
That's mostly it for OKD virtualization side. Well, thank you, Sandra. Any questions or comments on the virtualization stuff? All right, then let's move on to uh, uh, any issues. Are there any issues in the repo that folks want to bring to our attention um, that, that point to anything that maybe the, the group can take, uh, take some action on or improve documentation or anything of that nature? Is there anything that... I just out? leaked one issue in the chat here, um, issue 963. And I, I, I've, I didn't have a lot of time to look into it, but I will continue to do so. I just wanted to know if anybody else has hit this issue, and this is essentially uh, the machine config operator is degraded uh, after installation and doesn't come up properly. The logs show that it can't find um, the rendered machine config that is set as initial node config. It apparently sets uh, sets that field to a config that does not exist. It's at least not the one that is uh, rendered by the machine config controller. Uh, I have internally messaged the MCO, the machine config operator team, to also take a look. Might be a few days, but if there is anybody who has hit the same issue uh, or has any, any input to that, I would be uh, very of, uh, yeah, of a comment or just uh, any, any input or feedback here. Uh, I can do a UPI on Vs here and see if I can duplicate it. Um, the That'd other thing we awesome. could do is, is uh, post something to the email list and something in the chat asking if anyone else has had that. So I'll take that as an action item um, just to see randomly if there's anyone else out there uh, that can do that. We need to, I think, leverage that a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Um, uh, any other issues that stand out that, that folks uh, think we should discuss or should um, reach out to the community for, for uh, support on? I don't, I don't see anything in particular that stands out. There's only a handful of issues, actually, that are recent. All right, let's move actually, on. There's, oh, yeah. Uh, I just, um, I saw that Sandro uh, opened an issue, and that is issue 898. Um, I was wondering, have you have you hit that issue again? Is that still um, is that still an issue you're hitting? Because really, the Zincati service should be disabled, and you are uh, referring to a Toml file um, here that we used to have in in OKD to disable it, but we've since uh, removed that file and disabled uh, Zincati. Uh, a different way. So, I yeah, I was just wondering uh, if that's still an issue. I haven't heard back there. Um, I saw it when installing on 4.7, and I didn't redeploy from scratch 4.8, so I'm not sure if the issue is still there. I just upgraded from 4.7 to 4.8, so I didn't notice any special case for this. But I, I can try to reproduce reinstalling from scratch 4.8, and I can report. That would be great because, yeah, really, that shouldn't be happening. I don't know when when we introduced that system D drop into disables and catty. I think it was before 4.7. So I was really, uh, yeah, it, it seemed strange to me that this was uh, that, that this would pop up. But um, if it doesn't happen on 4.8 and nobody sees it on 4.8, I would like to close all those old issues. I really don't want people to or I don't want to encourage people to install old versions. Now we're on 4.8 and people should be installing that if they have mm -hmm. a new install. They shouldn't be installing 4.6 or 4.7. Um, obviously, I think back then 4.7 was the latest release, um, but th th that seems to be a re recurring um, thing here that people uh, try old versions and uh, come up with problems and then um, that I, I, I don't really want to spend time on that if we've already moved on from that. I totally agree. Uh, I opened it in 4.7 because at that time 4.8 wasn't yet released. So. Oh yeah, really absolutely. Um, and and, and, and that, that's why it would be great if you could double check it still happens with 4.8. If it's not fixed there, obviously that's, that would be an issue. Um, yes. And there is a whole bunch of other issues though uh, where people install older versions. Um, can, even... can I, it's worth, we might want to consider something along the lines of what happens with Fedora in Red Hat Bugzilla, where 
when a new release goes out, you know, throw a warning, tag it as like decayed or whatever. And like, if nobody confirms that it is actually for uh, valid for the new release, close it after like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Some sort of general surgeon's warning um, message politely saying, you know, this is that we can put into the, a comment and then say, you know, if they don't respond back with, you know, they are stuck on, you know, using 4.7 or something like that, um, close it. So, yeah, there's some there's some etiquette around this. I think that would be uh, that would be immensely helpful um, just to keep to keep us focused on the things that are actually um, that that actually still are an issue. And it's it's kind of similar with uh, more discussions I've been seeing people following some guide from some third party site. Um, you know, we, we should and I I am very appreciative of the docs effort just for that alone. Uh, that we should have all those guides in OKD proper um, and not have people follow guides from some blog they read somewhere, uh, which might be version 4.5 or something. Um, oh, yeah. And it just, you know, if they install the, the, the current version with that blog, obviously things might go wrong that nobody's uh, thought of. And um, it's not really uh, productive to, to spend a lot of time on those. Yeah, yeah if, if we could kind of have official installation guides, and I think this is essentially what Brian and all, all of the docs uh, subgroup is working on. And if we make, could make it easier to link that out, I think that would happen less and less. But I, I, I also don't, don't want to just um, shut those discussions down with you install it the wrong way and nobody does it like that. That's also not fair, but um, just, yeah, just as an additional comment here. Um, yeah. The less we see of, of those, that the better, I think. Well, it's you're observable hitting, in that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Diane. You're hitting my um, one of my mantras of uh, I hate blo uh, documentation by blogging. Um, um, I just I think we're doing the work around having the Twitter handle, starting to raise the visibility of OKD.io and the OKD uh, Twitter handle, and just trying to pump up people and direct them to the right places is really um, good. Go ahead, Jamie. Sorry about that. Oh no, that's that's fine. Uh, always feel free to go ahead. I, I we did see one come in recently. It was like an issue, I think, or a discussion item, um, where someone like had four different links to like external guides, and they were asking for our help. And it was like all of these random places that they got the info from. And it's like, well, where do we where do we start with that? We'd like to help, but it's kind of hard if we can't point them directly to one of our yeah, for sure. Uh, anything else on that uh, before we move on? All right. Uh, so uh, now we're into discussions. Um, Sandro, you want to go ahead? Yeah, you have a question here. Uh, yeah, I was asking if we have some press plan or some common messaging for the upcoming 4.9 release. We, we do. have something like that in Ovirt, or at least we use it to have it. We are not really following it anymore, but we use it to send out to press when we were releasing a new major. Yeah, the documentation group talked about this a little bit, but we, we don't really have anyone that's that's volunteered to start putting that all together yet i don't think i don't think anyone volunteered at the uh, at the last meeting um but yeah that's definitely something that we want to do and um i think basically what we talked about was um and we talked about a little bit in this meeting as well is create a document and start putting together like bullet points of um what are some of the so if 4.9 is coming, what are some of the benefits? Like we can riff on the OpenShift official documentation uh, and release stuff. And then, um, you know, create our own uh, that's, you know, makes the case for upgrading to 4.9 basically, you know, and yeah. the benefits. And we're going to make uh, Christian just... write it. Yeah, I'll just add on that. I'm on the OpenShift 4.9 marketing thread. Um, so they're building a blog posts, you know, 
in each of the releases. There's a thread and a group meeting about what we're going to publicize in 4.9, so I kind of have an early warning system for what is going to be the official OpenShift stuff. So sharing that and then shape-shifting that with the docs team into some sort of a missive um, blog post or what, however we want to do, or just, yeah. We, we can do that easily if I if I remember, and then um, if I'm not the person, I can find someone. Anes Kim from Red Hat um, drives that effort, so we can ask her also to give us a, the draft release before it gets published and then do a version of it. And um, add any Fedora core OS-ness that we should. And we'll add that as a task item uh, for the next docs meeting is to actually start that. Yeah official effort for 4.9 uh, release. Okay, and just to add, add to that, um, based on the previous conversations, um, do we need to go and update the guides for 4.9? So they don't yeah. find out of date, <laughs> out of date information. Yeah. So I, I think that's big, that's gonna be bigger than just the docs group. So I think we'll, we need to reach out and ask for volunteers across all the various platforms. But uh, I think we probably do need to plan. Um, do we have, Christian, do we have a sort of an ETA? I know we can't give, but are we looking in terms of days, weeks, months, your best estimate? It's, it's definitely days uh, now. If, if we don't get this to work, uh, let's say by Friday, um, then we will just skip this one conformance test that we're not adhering to right now. And the next release, which I think Vadim always cuts them on Sundays, will then be 4.9. Okay, so anybody want a Thanksgiving project or a Christmas project? <laughs> <laughs> I could chip away at this over Christmas a little bit with the help of uh, if someone else wants to join me, but not Thanksgiving. Yeah, not Thanksgiving for you guys. Yeah, um, um, let's let's talk about it at the docs meeting next Tuesday too, and see who you know who are the original authors of some of those guides, and reach out to them um, as opposed to you taking it all on. Um, maybe it's a a simple thing to collaborate with them. Um, and I will I, dig I up think, the, go ahead. Sorry, Dan, I just, I also think we need the, um, the variety of platforms because not everybody has access to all of the underlying platforms. I can certainly do the overt and mm -hmm. play around with that one, but I don't have um, vSphere access. I've got vSphere so I can do that. And there was, there's someone else who has, and we can actually reach out to people who, we know are using these, but maybe haven't written docs before. And we could say, hey, we've got this doc that needs updating. The original author is MIA or doesn't have the time. You know, would you be interested in taking a look at this and see? I'm thinking particularly of Kai, for example. So if I didn't have time for UPI vSphere, the guy is on it in terms of UPI vSphere OKD. So um, that would be someone we could reach out to. Uh, I could spend a little time doing uh, doing an OpenStack deployment. That would open be awesome. Deployments are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I kind of have it figured out now. So yeah. Um, if if so anybody has know. access, <laughs> if anybody yeah. has access to bare, bare metal machines, uh, we have now included all the bare metal parts in the payload. Uh, we haven't been. We haven't found the time to set up end-to-end -end tests from our side, but theoretically, um, this should work now. I, I don't think anybody has tested it yet, um, but if, if anybody has access to um, at least, I think you need at least four machines, three masters and a bootstrap node, um, that would be super awesome if somebody could test this. Unfortunately, I don't have access to those machines either. Um, you can also use overt VMs as bare metals. It won't be really distinguishable. So do do we do we want to get together a list of people per per platform? Um, yeah, yeah, we talked about doing this before, but the we just didn't have anyone to back. I mean, we talked about this like months ago of like basically generating a list of who has access to what platform. That we just didn't have enough people to to support that. And if someone wants to take that on, like you, good sir, that would be fantastic. Sure. Okay. So, so right now, um, we have uh, we have me on OpenStack. Um, who else just just gave their names? I'll I'll write it down right now. So Brian on Overt. 
Okay. Jamie on vSphere. Sorry, Jamie, you on vSphere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? I, I don't want to volunteer uh, myself right now, but I did want to uh, put a link down somewhere. Maybe this is the, the right place here. We do have a PR open to add end-to-end um, -end tests for OpenStack, and that's, this PR has been open for a long time. It just never it, it just never worked, unfortunately, so far. So if any if if you get OpenStack to work, and you could also have a look at this PR, um, maybe you see what, what's wrong with the PR currently. Uh, but he has been doing an awesome job rebasing that from time to time. Um, I, I think the last rebase is a month ago now already again. Uh, though, so it, yeah, just if you see anything, if it works for you, and uh, you could also have a look at the PR, um, that would be super awesome. I mean, it is our uh, release repository um, job config stuff that's in, in the PR, so it might not be uh, super clear, but um, so did I link the right one? I hope so. Um, so yeah, it, just, it, just in case, if, if you have the time, um, that might make sense. Uh, I can. It, it it's not super clear because it doesn't. It just adds another job config and links out to an existing workflow. So you you'll actually have to look at the workflow and not not at the code that is added in the PR. Um, if you're diving into that, I can definitely um, you know give you a link to to where that workflow lives. Well, thanks, Christian. Uh, Diane said something here I wanted to touch on real quick. Diane, you said. Um, we could create an issue and tag them with a note uh, to ask if they need help. One of the things is, Mike, I don't think we had an account for every single guide, did we? Like, like basically the guides got copied over, but it's not like the users are there uh, in the system to be able to tag them on their on their. Guides. I mean, it looks like the metadata got removed. There was some metadata, some header information we had in the old format um, that was preserving kind of like, uh, who wrote it and when the last time it was updated, but it looks like uh, some of that stuff probably got removed, uh, probably because it doesn't fit, you know, the frameworks we went through. Yeah, I, I just think if we can, you know, give credit where credit is due, first of all, um, and then I'll, and we can add them in, and some of them may have disappeared off the planet, um, you know, and doing other things, so that happens all the time. But as long as we, we have that information in the, the make docs version or the, the right places. Um, we could create an issue, tag them with it, um, with a note, you know, if they that 4.9 is coming, do you need help updating your guide, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, finding the time is always gonna be the hard thing. And then if they say yes, they need help or they don't respond at all, then we can go in and tag a few other volunteers um, from maybe from Daniel's list. Um, yeah, I can see. I see what we're doing. Yeah, okay. But that that that's that way we would have an ongoing thread with the author and credit them, and I can find more swag to hand out for every every time we do an update or something. I think. I think that's my. Yeah. Meme. I mean, yeah, that was kind of the idea of being able to use like a metadata block at the beginning of these documents, is we could say like, you know, who's worked on this? When was the last time it was updated? What is the known version that it works for? Um, you know, just to help it bake a little provenance into these documents. And yeah, we, we can actually put we, we can actually put metadata blocks in comments, mk dot comments or markdown comments. Sorry, um, if you want to put that stuff back in, and that doesn't get rendered then. Yeah, that would be great. Or even render it, and then that people get credit where credit is due. Well, we could talk about that next week in the docs meeting after you all eat turkey. Um, but I think that might be an excellent way of doing it, um, and then any additional volunteers can pile on to the issue that's created for the next release, and that can be part of the release tasks each time a new release comes out. So for, for any of us attending this who are not familiar with the docs meeting, what happens in the docs meeting? What's the it's scope it's of that? basically discussing everything documentation-oriented. The website. For, for OKD specifically? Guides. Yes, yes. Correct. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. Yes. Just OKD docs. You should doc. be there, actually, if you're interested in, in sort of heading up this list and stuff like that. Um, be helpful if you were there. How, if you how do I get an invite? It's the same. It's the same date, time, link, and everything. It's literally it's just, just next week. opposed to okay. the other week. It's just next week, Tuesday at noon. Okay. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you go to okd.io and look there, there's a link to the Google Calendar. Or yeah, well, actually, Chris just posted the Fedora, Fedora Calendar, yeah. which you can just add to which, the Which, oh, sorry, the Fedora Calendar, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah. All right, actually, me, something, oh, something okay. broke in that calendar when, I don't know, uh, I think, Jamie, when I added you, and I, I don't see, I used to import that calendar uh, into Google, um, and it doesn't work for me anymore. I don't know if anybody else has, has that problem. It's just that yeah. the, it right. doesn't show up. The, the calendar, the FedOcal was redeployed onto an OpenShift cluster, and somebody goofed up the data when it was done. And so the data and the configuration, it should be straightened out now. You will just have to configure it again or re-import your subscriptions or whatever. It was yeah, something I, I, related to how they, when they tried to migrate it from a VM to a container, they goofed it up the first time, and then they fixed it later. Yeah, I tried to I, I, import I, I, the invite this morning, and it didn't work. I had to go through importing Thunderbird and exporting it in order to be able to import it in Google. All right, let's take this as a task item to take a look at. Yeah. We've got three minutes, and I want to make sure we get everything in. So we'll, task item is that we will look into the gap uh, and make sure that it is uh, addressed. Diane, you had some something about yep. uh, DevConf. Go ahead. Um, DevConf um, CZ is coming up. We have a working group um, meeting and a talk um, that were accepted. I know Christian's going, so um, I'm not I'm not going to be able to go because of COVID um, and travel restrictions. But um, so if anyone's going and listening to this video and you're going um, to DevConf and Bruno, um, let us know so that we can you know coalesce and figure out the speaking gig and and attendee stuff and do promos for that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention today is the KubeCon um, call for papers closes on December 17th. Um, I was, and I'll nudge you separately, Christian, around the ARM stuff and other things. If anyone has something that they want to submit, um, get it in now. If you need help, um, let me know. Uh, I'm happy. I'm not, I'm in Canada now, so I'm not eating turkey this week. I can help you with that. Um, but I would love, I'd love to have some OKD being, even if it's not talking about OKD, but you do, using OKD as the Kubernetes distro that you're demoing on, that would be bloody awesome. Um, so some of the, and, and we can figure out how to get it, um, tweak it so that it gets there. Um, I'm also going to be hosting an OKD, not an OKD, um, an OpenShift Commons, this one, this hat, um, gathering at KubeCon EU. So um, I am once again looking for a an OKD end user story. So if anybody knows of one, and one of the things that I'm going to try and do on my Thanksgiving and holiday break is is create a list of everybody I know who has OKD in production, um, and so that we have sort of a real end users working group um, for that. So that's that's my um, quick and dirty on that. So anyone needs help shape shifting for that? Anyone going to Bruno and anyone using OKD in production um, has a customer or end user story with a cool workload? Um, let me know because. I'm looking again. All righty. Any last minute thoughts? We're right at time. Uh, Christian, did you find out what field that is that's faulty on the calendar? Yeah, I found it out. I, I'm just looking at the source file here, um, and it was the recurring, uh, I, I have to find the name. Um, like there's a field that actually sets that it's a recurring thing, and that is, uh, that doesn't work. Um, the R rule frequent. Maybe that is different now, though. I think. Well, anyway, was, let's. Was, well, so we'll put it in the channel once we figure out what it is. So, yeah. 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 All right. I'll, I'll probably just file an issue with the FedOcal book. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, folks. We have one more meeting before we break for the end of the year. And if you can, show up for the docs meeting. Perfect. Take care. See you.